TB or tuberculosis is a chronic infectious disease caused by mycobacterium tuberculosis that needs to be treated over a long period of time that can be months or even extend to years if you are still positive for TB culture and as, the, as TB is a chronic disease that's why the lesion of TB is fibrotic and drug penetration is a problem. The drugs that are used against tuberculosis can be divided into the first line antituberculous drugs and the second line antituberculous drugs. The first line are of course used first and they are cheap, effective and with decreased tos toxicity while the second line are of course used uh, after the first line doesn't work and they are expensive, not that effective, also with increased toxicity. The first line antituberculous drugs include isoniazid, rifampin, pyrazinamide, ethambutol, and streptomycin. While the second line antituberculous drugs include fluoroquinolones, amikacin, cycloserin, ethionamide, paraaminosalicylic acid, and capriomycin. Seems like we don't have any place for capriomycin. But anyways, we have already studied it, right? To remember the names of both of these classes of drugs, the first line drugs can be remembered by the mnemonic RIPES and the second uh, line can be remembered by face pack. Coming to the first drug, isoniazid, it acts by inhibiting mycolic acid synthesis that is an essential part in the cell wall of mycobacterium tuberculosis. Now isoniazid is a prodrug that depends upon bacterial catalase for its activation. So if we are depending upon the bacteria, so bacteria has the power to mutate the cat gene and or inactivate it and thus become resistant to this uh, drug by not even activating it into its active form. It can kill both intracellular and extracellular bacilli and thus is used both in the treatment and prophylaxis. The pharmacokinetic properties include that it can cross the blood CSF barrier, also the placenta and also tubercular cavities. It is metabolized by acetylation in the liver and thus excreted in the urine and its metabolism is dependent on slow and rapid acetylators. Its side effects include hepatotoxicity, that is because uh, as it is metabolized in the liver and these drugs are used on a chronic basis, that's why this hepatotoxicity is there. It leads to a raise in LFTs, that is ASTs and ALTs. Now AST and ALTs uh, require pyridoxine, vitamin B6, for their activity. That's why uh, they will deplete the vitamin B6, leading to peripheral neuritis. Other side effects are sideroblastic anemia, SLE, that is uh, mostly associated with slow acetylators, and hemolytic anemia in G6PD deficient patients. Now, I thought I should explain these side effects a bit. Now, paradoxin or vitamin B6 is also required in the synthesis of heme. When that is not synthesized, Iron gets deposited in the red blood cells, leading to sideroblasts formation and thus sideroblastic anemia. Isoniazid is also associated with SLE, just like many other drugs, because it can bind to carrier proteins and act as a hepton and thus elicit an immunological response against the body's own cells. Lastly, we know that glutathione is a tripeptide that is an antioxidant, right? Now, what happens? that when glutathione has taken care of the oxidative stress in any cell, it needs to be uh, reduced into its active form. So in order to convert the oxidized form into the reduced form, we need NADPH. Now this NADPH comes from G6PD in the pentose phosphate pathway. Now if a person is G6PD deficient, then this glutathione will not be converted into its reduced form and thus oxidative stress will not be taken care of. That's why in G6PD deficient patients, there will be hemolytic anemia due to oxidative stress. Now you may ask that G6PD deficiency 
will be there in all of the cells of the body, then why are RBCs more susceptible? The reason is because RBCs do not have mitochondria. They have uh, no source of producing reducing power uh, apart from glutathione. So they totally depend on glutathione to be converted into its reduced form by NADPH and thus on G6PD. I hope that was not confusing. It was, I know. Coming to rifampin or rifampicin, this is also known as sterilizing agent because it acts on both the intracellular and extracellular bacteria and also on the ones that are present in the caseous necrosis that are the spurters. It acts by inhibiting the DNA dependent RNA polymerase and thus RNA synthesis. It is bactericidal for mycobacterium tuberculosis, gonococcus, H. influenza, Staph aureus, E. coli, and Pseudomonas. Regarding pharmacokinetics, food decreases its absorption. It is metabolized in the liver by acetylation, and thus the soluble form is excreted in the urine, while the unmetabolized form is excreted in the bile and undergoes enterohepatic recycling. It can be used in the treatment of TB as well as leprosy and meningococcal carrier state as well as for brucellosis treatment. The adverse effects will also will include uh, hepatotoxicity, same as isoniazid. In elderly patients and alcoholics, its uh, chances have increased. It also causes a flu-like syndrome, GI disturbances, skin rash, itching, flushing, etc. And a characteristic red-orange color in the urine, tears, and saliva. They are harmless, so the patient needs to be educated. Rifampin is also an enzyme inducer. It induces its own metabolism as well. And the female a tuberculous patient needs to be told and can have unwanted pregnancies because of this. Next, pyrazinamide acts by inhibiting mycolic acid synthesis, but not with the same mechanism as isoniazid. It causes a dose-dependent hepatotoxicity, hepatitis and also hyperuricemia because it competes with uh, uric acid for secretion in the kidney. Ethambutol inhibits arabinogalactin synthesis by inhibiting the enzyme arabinogalactin synthase and thus cell wall synthesis inhibition because arabinogalactin is a major structural component of mycobacterial cell wall. It is a bacteriostatic drug and it has no cross resistance with any other NTTP drug. It can also be used to um, combat mycobacterium avium complex. It can cross the blood brain barrier and can be used in meningi meningitis treatment. The adverse effects, uh, the one that you need to remember is optic neuritis with specially color vision and in that specially um, red green color vision and it can also cause hyperuricemia just like pyrazinamide. Next is an aminoglycoside that is streptomycin and we've studied that in detail already. And for tuberculous patients, they are given IV or IM in hospitals. We've also discussed fluoroquinolones and the ones that can be used are ciprofloxacin, ofloxacin, moxifloxacin, and levofloxacin, and they are all bactericidal in nature. We've also seen amikacin. Remember the mom who was strong enough to combat mycobacterium tuberculosis as well? It is also given IV, and it is a sidal drug. Cycloserin is a cell wall synthesis inhibitor and can be present, can cross blood CSF barrier, and has CNS side effects such as tremor, psychosis, convulsions, and headache. Another drug, terizidone, it is same as cycloserin and can also be used in extrapulmonary uh, TB, such as urinary tract TB, and it is better tolerated than cycloserin. Next drug is ethionamide, which is same as isoniazid in structure but uh, has reduced efficacy. It also inhibits mycolic uh, acid synthesis. The side effects include epigastric pain, hepatitis, and blood vision. Next is para-aminosalicylic acid, which resembles sulfonamides in their structure, and sulfonamides in turn resemble PABA. So it will inhibit folate synthesis, right? 
it cannot cross the blood brain barrier it has good gut absorption and its metabolism is by acetylation by the liver so it can compete with isoniazid for acetylation and thus can increase isoniazid plasma levels it has gi side effects hepatic damage and also importantly thrombocytopenia we have already discussed capreomycin and it is a an aminoglycoside now we'll discuss the different regimens for treating the tb that can be associated with resistance or some complications such as pregnancy or hiv the different types can be the normal course of therapy with no resistance second can be multi drug resistant tuberculosis thirdly extensively drug resistant tuberculosis and the last two complications are with hiv patients and pregnant women now some drugs that are used in mycobacterium avium complex inhibition are also discussed here now all these regimens include multi drug therapy why is that because one we want to uh, get rid of the bacteria by rapidly killing it as soon as possible secondly we don't want resistance thirdly we don't want relapse and lastly we want to shorten the duration of therapy Firstly the normal short course therapy is for about 6 to 8 months it is convenient highly effective and less toxic it comprises of an intensive phase and a continuation phase the intensive phase is for 2 to 3 months while the continuation phase is for 4 to 6 months in the intensive phase we use four drugs and in the continuation phase we use two drugs both of them are sidel and they can be given daily or to improve patient compliance which is very necessary in tb management and treatment uh we can give it thrice weekly the intensive phase is to render the patient non contagious while the continuation phase is to prevent a relapse by eliminating the remaining bacteria multi drug tuberculosis is the one in which the organism has resistance to both isoniazid and rifampin with or without resistance to any other anti tubercular drug in this case we use four drugs with known susceptibility to the organism it also con- uh, consists of an intensive and a continuation phase the intensive phase is with six drugs for 6 to 9 months while the continuation phase uh, has four drugs for 18 months and don't forget the pyridoxine to prevent the peripheral neuritis xtrtb is the one that is resistant to isoniazid rifampin fluoroquinolones and one of amikacin capreomycin etc and this is usually fatal in the hiv associated tb we usually prefer rifabutin that is a rifampin analog but it has a less enzyme inducing activity so it will not enhance the metabolism of the H- anti hiv drugs that we, we are using such as protease inhibitors and that's why they are um, preferred and a short course therapy should be started as soon as possible after diagnosis of tb in hiv patients in pregnancy all the first line drugs are used except streptomycin which is contraindicated in pregnancy to eradicate mac complex we can use macrolides and if you remember specifically clarithromycin and azithromycin and fluoroquinolones for about 18 to 24 months lastly for chemoprophylaxis of tuberculosis uh, there should be indications such as a new newborn of a mother with active tb young children that is less than 6 years with positive tuberculin test and if the pers- patient has a household contact with tb patients and also with the additional risk factors such as diabetes mellitus malignancy and aids etc these are the indications for chemoprophylaxis but what we do for chemoprophylaxis is use uh, isoniazid for about 6 months that's all for anti tubercular drugs and i hope you understood